Alright guys, quick guide through setting up a um, side-scrolling shooter in Game Salad. First thing we need to do is make five actors, so we're going to go into the actor tab of the library, smiley face, hit the plus button six times, which is right here, to make six different actors. Name the first one player ship. We'll name the second one player bullet. We'll name the second one enemy ship. Just turn that into a capital E. We'll name the second, uh, the <laughs> the fourth one enemy spawner. We'll name the fifth one the score display. And the sixth one, the background. Or the capital B. Alright, so that's that turn. Uh, now we're going to sort out this player ship so that its size is correct for the assets that we have for this particular tutorial. So we're going to click on the player ship in the library and we're going to come down to the attributes panel, make sure that we're on the, the, we are on the actor tab here. And we're going to change the size to 76 on the width and 67 on the height. That's that done. And we can drag the player ship into the scene, or rather into the stage, by just simply clicking and dragging and dropping that in. All right, next thing to do is to get this thing programmed so that it can move up and down on the screen. So I'll just position it a bit more carefully. And I'm going to open the backstage by clicking the toggle backstage button up here. And again, I'm just going to select the player ship from the actual library itself to make sure I'm working on the prototype. So I'm going to need a rule for this. So in the backstage, just type in the word rule. The condition that we're going to use is key, so we'll type that into there. The key that we want to press to start with will be up. And the do is going to be move. We're going to set the move direction to 90 degrees, and we're going to make it relative to the scene. And then we'll rename that rule move up. Now we need another rule for move down. So we'll go rule again, key for the condition. This time we're going to press down do. I'm going to move again, this time in the opposite direction, so 270 degrees relative to the scene. And we'll call this rule move down with a capital M. Move down. All right, we can test that out by hitting the green player button at the top. We'll just click on the screen here and try the up and down arrows. If your actor is moving up and down, you've done it just fine. So we'll go back to the editor now. And we're going to get this ship to spawn in the player bullets. But before we do that, we're going to set the size of the player bullet. So we'll click on player bullet in the actor library. Just like we did before, we're going to come down to the attributes panel in the actor tab. And we're going to go size. The size for the bullet is going to be 16 on the width. And 9 on the height. Okay. And just to check that, you can drag it in if you like. And then just press delete to get rid of it. So we'll click on it, press delete, and it's gone. Alright, so back to the player ship now, so selecting from the library, not from the actual stage itself, must be from the library. And we're going to make a new rule, and we'll call this room, uh, rule fire bullet. The condition will be a key, this time it's going to be spacebar. And the behavior that we want this time is spawn actor. The actor that we want to spawn, we can hit the little drop down and choose player bullet. And for the position in this first box, which corresponds to the x-axis, the second box corresponds to the y-axis, x first, then y. So on the x-axis, we're going to add in a value of 40, and we'll leave it all relative to actor. So by doing that, this is what we've got. We can move up and down, we press the space bar, and we spawn the bullet actor. But this, the uh, bullet actor doesn't go anywhere yet, so we'll do that next. So we'll close that down, I'll minimize it, and then we'll go and click on play a bullet in the library, and uh, we don't need a rule for this, we're just going to type in move for our behavior. We'll leave the direction at zero degrees, but we will set it to relative to scene, and you can decide a speed if you like. So with that in place now, we can move up and down, and when we press spacebar, we can fire a bullet. Alright, cool. So the next thing to do would be to get the enemy spawner to work. So we don't need um, to change the size of this in the actual actor, actor attributes panel, we'll just take it in. And really, we want it to be around about the same. Well, just to be honest, we should set it just a little bit lower than the height of the actual scene. So I'm actually going to set my height up in the top right hand corner there by typing in 250 on the height. 
so we know that the in, the, the entire um, height of this actor is 250 pixels all right so we'll click back on the enemy spawner in the library and now we're going to program it to do some stuff now we're going to use a timer for this so we're going to type in timer and we want it to spawn an enemy ship randomly every so often so we're going to leave every on there and in the expression editor by clicking the little e button there we can open up the expression editor we'll press the bin to get rid of the five seconds that's in there we're going to go functions and we'll scroll down till we find random double click random and it jumps in here we'll set the minimum time to three seconds and the maximum time to six seconds and press the tick to apply we'll turn on run to completion now we need to set our behavior so we'll just click inside the timer for the behavior and we'll go spawn actor this time we're going to choose the enemy ship to spawn and for the position on the x-axis we'll leave it zero because that's side to side we just want it to spawn randomly on the y-axis so on the y-axis box for from position we're going to select the e button for the expression editor we're going to go functions scroll down to find random double click and we're going to put in minus 200 uh, sorry 125 for the minimum and for the maximum 125 and we'll press the uh, the tick button to apply um, we might in the meantime just for now we should probably change the color of the enemy ship just so we can see it so I'm actually gonna make this enemy ship red so by doing that I just clicked on the enemy ship went to the actor attributes panel there and clicked on the color box and set it to red and I am gonna move this spawner here just so we can see what's going on for now so we'll press play and hopefully every so often we should get a oh, there goes an enemy we didn't change its size so it's rather large yeah, it's randomly spawning enemies in random positions all right so we'll go back to the editor from here and we need to change the size of that enemy ship so we'll click on enemy ship and we'll go down to the uh, actor attributes panel and for the size it's the same as the player so 76 on the width 67 on the height and we'll just test that out to make sure and we're just waiting for it to spawn in yep there goes one so basically every so often between three and six seconds between a random position anywhere up and down on the height of this actor it's basically going to spawn in an enemy so just like we did with the bullet we need to tell the enemy ship to move automatically so we're going to click again on enemy ship in the library there just to make sure that we're on it and we're going to go move for our behavior in the direction we're going to set that to 180 degrees and we'll set it relative to the scene we're also going to move this spawner just off the edge of the screen there so let's have a look what we've got now so we can move up and down and fire our bullets and every so often an enemy ship's going to come hurtling towards us all right not too bad okay so back to the editor now next thing we need to do is get the player bullet to destroy the enemy ships so we're going to go on the enemy ship in the actor library and we're going to make a rule that says the condition will be a collision so when the enemy ship collides with the actor of type and we'll hit the end drop down and we'll look for player bullet do destroy this actor so the rule says when the enemy ship collides with the player bullet destroy the enemy ship so I'll just type that into my rule destroy Let's check it out and see if it works. Just waiting for an enemy ship to spawn. There it is. And yeah, okay, we can destroy it. We might also want the bullet to destroy as well, so we can set a rule up on the bullet that says when you collide with the actor of type enemy ship, destroy the bullet. Let's try it just to make sure. So it should destroy the ship and the bullet will be destroyed by the ship yeah okay very good not too bad later on we could maybe increase the spawn timer of these things because they're, they're not coming through very quickly all right um so that's great so far uh, the next thing that we need to do is get our score display to work so um i'll just rename this rule on the bullet destroy so to get the score display to work we're going to actually have to create a new game attribute so we're going to click on game attributes down in the attributes panel we're going to hit this little plus button here to create a new attribute and it's going to be an integer which is a whole number and we'll call this attribute score cool. 
All right, so we've got that in place. Now, what we need to do here is, on our enemy ship, we've already got a rule that says when you collide with the bullet, destroy this actor. We're going to add a new behavior in there, and that new behavior is going to be a change attribute. Now, we're just going to lift this change attribute up above the destroy, and here we need to set the attribute that we want to change. So we're going to hit this first A symbol here, look for attributes and game, and there's our score attribute that we created. Double click that and it jumps in. We're also going to say what we wanted to change it to, and we're going to change it to by hitting the expression editor. We're going to find attributes, game, double click on score, and then at the end, we're going to put in plus 10. So that now says whenever you collide, whenever the uh, the enemy ship collides with a bullet, it's going to change the attribute game score to get whatever game score is plus 10. On the actual score display, we'll click that in the library, and we're going to put a display text behavior on. We'll click the expression editor to open it up. Press the bin to get rid of hello world. We're going to go attributes, game, score. Press the tick. We're going to change the color of the text to red. And we'll press the X button to cancel that down. Next thing we need to do is take the score display onto the screen, we can shrink it down manually, pop it in the center of the screen somewhere. So hopefully, we should get a zero, and every time we kill an enemy, that number's going to go up by 10. All right, fantastic, that's working just fine. Cool. Okay, that works. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is um, set up some kind of player death rule. So we'll click on the player ship, and we'll make a rule that says when you collide with the actor of type enemy ship, do, and this time we're going to select a change scene. Now we haven't made an extra scene for this, but that's, that's exactly what we're going to do next. So we're going to go back to our scenes tab at the top here in the library. We can rename the scene that we're in level 1. And we're going to name this new scene. We made a new scene by hitting the plus button up there. We'll call this new scene Game Over Screen. So we'll go back to our actors here. Make sure we're on player ship. In our change scene, we're going to go and change it to the Game Over Screen. We're also going to take our score display and we're going to take it into the game over screen. Now notice that at the top of this, the screen here, it shows you which scene you're actually working in. So we're currently in the game over screen. If I wanted to go back to my level one, I'll just go back to my scenes tab and click level one. It'll take me back there. So I'll go to game over screen, take my score display, and plonk that right in the middle of the screen there. And this is just to give the player some indication of uh, what their final score was. We're also going to make one quick actor here and we'll call this the game <laughs> I'm going to put a capital G in there game over text and on that actor we'll put a display text in that says press sp <laughs> space bar to try again. We'll change the color of the text. This time I'll make it green. I'm gonna turn on wrap text inside actor, which basically means that the text has to stay within the boundaries that we set for the size of the actor. So I'll make it that big for now. And because I'm in the game over screen, if I press play, oh no, it took me into the game. But I can choose my game over screen from down here. And it says press space bar to try again, and it shows you what your score was. So hopefully, if I play the game now, if I get hit, I'll kill a couple of enemies to get some to get a score up. So there's one dead. Got 10 points, 20 points in the next one. I'll let uh, let that hit the player, and that should. Do. Okay, so it's recorded our score, 20, and it's saying press space bar to try again. But we haven't programmed that in yet. So on our game over text. We'll make a rule that says when the key space is down, do 
reset the game. And by resetting the game, it'll take us back to the first scene and it'll also reset our score counter as well. So let's try it. So we'll kill a couple of enemies and we'll let an enemy kill us. And we'll try it out. Oh, I killed three. <laughs> Alright, here we go. So I get 30 on my score, so if I press spacebar, it should, yep, set the score back to zero and starts the game all over again. Alright, there we go. That's fundamentally the game put in place now. The only thing that's left to do is um, get the background actor programmed in, uh, make sure that it loops continuously so it looks like we're moving, and um, we're going to put some visual assets in as well.